Every year, honeybee colonies will elect to swarm in most cases. During this period, thousands of honeybees will go on an adventure in which only 25% of swarms will survive their first winter. Somehow the bees come to a consensus and are able to make their decision on the location they're going to, and then at the same time, they're able to stick together and navigate as a group to their new destination. These are the honeybee voyagers. Good afternoon, beekeepers and bee enthusiasts. How are you doing? It's another great day of the farm. And we're hanging out. It is cold and wet today, y'all, in the end of November. And I've got my coat today. I'm not freezing like I was in the last video. It's, I'm still cold, but I'm doing a lot better in this video. And it's not going to stop us from coming to you with an outstanding video today. And of course, today we're talking about honeybee voyagers. Now, I've always been blown away by how honeybees can somehow get into a swarm cluster, come to a consensus on the location they're going to be moving to, and then move as a group to that location. It always fascinated me. I never really knew how they did it, and that was until I ran into this outstanding book, Honeybee Democracy, by Professor Thomas Seeley. And in this book, he covers all kinds of things about how swarms operate, their decision making, you know, their their democratic process, and and all kinds of crazy things. I mean, there is some good information in this book. And today we're going to be covering a few things that he mentions in this book. However, we're not going to be talking about everything in this book. I'm going to leave it up to you to go out and get this book. And I'm telling you right now, you got to get this book. I highly recommend it. It's just got some great information on honeybees and stuff that I was just shocked when I found out about it. So just an outstanding book. And we know you're really going to enjoy the video today. We're going to be talking about all kinds of stuff that we've just learned recently as beekeepers and that we've just been blown away by. So it's going to be outstanding information. We know you're going to enjoy it. And without further ado, let's break right into it. So in 1951, German scientist Martin Lindauer was observing a swarm of honeybees. And he referred to this swarm as the X swarm. And he was just watching these bees, seeing what they were up to. And as he watched the surface of the swarm, he realized that many of the bees were dancing. And a lot of these bees were performing what's called the waggle dance. Now, if you don't know what the waggle dance is, it is performed generally by foragers returning to a beehive to basically tell their fellow bees, hey, I found some food. This is the angle of direction of the food. This is the distance. And other bees can watch that dance and they can locate that food. But Lindauer observed that the bees were performing this dance on the face of the swarm. So what exactly were they, were they saying? Well, many of the bees were dancing in one direction. Many of the bees were dancing in another direction. But over time, the honeybees generally came to a consensus on the angle of direction they were moving to. And as Lindauer watched this swarm, he saw that they ended up taking off in the angle of direction that those bees were performing their waggle dance. And it was just mind blowing. It was really cool. And I was really blown away by that myself because I, I thought that the waggle dance was only used for foragers, but in fact, it's used in swarms as well. So bees can basically tell other bees in the swarm, hey, this is the location we're interested in by performing that dance on the face of the swarm. So Martin Lindauer made quite a discovery as he observed the honeybees dancing on the surface of the swarm and then watching the swarm move in the direction that the bees were dancing in. And this is so fascinating and it really inspired a lot of people. And one of those inspired was of course Professor Thomas Seeley who is the author of the book we've mentioned today. Now Professor Seeley has often referred to Lindauer as a mentor for himself and it really pushed him to do a lot of research on honeybees himself. So there is an island off the coast of Maine called Appledore Island. And Professor Seeley found this island and figured it would be a great place to do tests on honeybee swarms, honeybee colonies, all kinds of things. And they did all kinds of cool stuff on this island. In 1998, Professor Seeley wanted to figure out how do bees figure the best location to move into? I mean, they might be dancing in a certain direction or whatever, but how do they, you know, are they really coming to figure out the best location to move into. Now, if you didn't know, honeybees prefer about 40 acre, four, I'm sorry, 40 liters of space for them to move into 
because 40 liters is enough space for them to get the, the right amount of honey to survive the winter. So they like 40 liters of space. So 1998, Professor Seeley did a test where he basically um, took a swarm, he put it out there on Appledore Island, and then in five separate locations, he put a hive. And four of the hives were, sw swarm hives that, that is, four of the hives were uh, 15 liters in space and one was 40 liters in space. So he wanted to test, you know, how accurate the bees are gonna be at determining the best home. He performed this test five times and four out of five times, the honeybee swarm chose the 40 liter location. So with that test, they figured that bees are pretty good at determining the best home to move into. And even though there's lots of scouts going out and, and finding different spots, they can generally find the best home and they're pretty accurate at that as well. So honeybees are pretty good at finding the best location for the swarm to move into. And Professor Seeley figured this out in his experiment that he performed on Appledore Island. And it was just really cool to see what he figured out. But how do bees come to this determination? Like what is going on for them to find the best location for them to move into? Well, if you didn't know, the average swarm has about 10,000 bees inside the colony. And of that 10,000 bees, about 400 of those bees are scouts. Now, when the swarm is in a cluster on a tree branch or anything really, they're sending those scouts all over, those place, all over the place to find great new locations for the swarm to move into. Now, let's take a scout, for example. They will basically go to a tree and they'll say, okay, is this tree good? It's got a knot in it and it's got a, a hollowed out point. You know, is it, is it, is it spacious enough? Um, you know, is it dry? It's not too wet. Is it good to go? And if the scout likes that spot, the scout will return to the swarm and start performing the waggle dance. Now, other scouts on the swarm surface will see this waggle dance and they will say, okay, well, I'll go check out that place too and see if I like it or not. And then the cool thing is, and this is where it kind of becomes a democratic process, is the next scout that goes to visit, they will make a determination for themselves if it is a good location for the swarm to move into. And sometimes they'll like the location and sometimes they won't. If they do like the location, then they will return to the swarm and they will start performing their own waggle dance, telling bees of that location and getting more bees interested in that location. And if they don't like the location, then they will forget about it and not talk about it again. So that's really cool about how bees figure out like, or come to a consensus on their, the next time they're gonna be moving into. Now, the other cool thing is, and I found this in Seeley's book uh, that we mentioned today, is that honeybees do not stick to a certain location for so long. They will basically go to a spot, they will check it out. If they like it, they'll return to the waggle dance. And then what they'll do is they'll go back to the spot and check it out again and then come back, do a waggle dance, and they'll repeat this a few times. But after so many times, they will actually stop doing this. And this is because if they were to be stubborn on a location that might not be best for the swarm, it could delay the decision-making of the swarm, thus risking the health of the bees. So they are not like your average politician where they're just extremely stubborn about a position or anything like that. They will, they'll go for a location and they'll, they'll advocate for it quite a few times, but if it's not gonna work out, or if, it, if the bees don't come to a consensus on that spot, they will eventually stop dancing for it. And so that's just a really cool thing about bees and their democratic process. So honeybees will have a series of visiting a home location, coming back, performing a dance, other scouts seeing that, going and seeing the new location, deciding for themselves, returning, maybe doing a dance, and a bunch, bunch of deliberations on whether or not they should move into a new home. But how do they make the final decision of a new home? Like what is, what is the thing that just says, okay, this is the home, this is where we're going, this is where we need to go. Like what is that final decision? Well, it was once believed that honeybees would somehow perform a tally of votes on the surface of the swarm. So they would basically run around they would count the different dancers and they would keep up with it and then they would come to a decision. 
However, Martin Lindauer noted in his research that he did not see any bees going from one dancer to another and keeping a running count or anything like that. And Professor Seeley in his research also noted that he did not see any bees doing a tally or anything like that. So that kind of put down that hypothesis. Another hypothesis was, is that instead of reaching a minimum amount of bees on the surface of the swarm to move, perhaps the bees reach a quorum or a minimum required amount of bees at the nest site location they're interested in moving into. And it was an interesting hypothesis. So Professor Seeley basically went to Appledore Island again to do research. And he basically did two separate tests. Now in one test, he basically had a swarm and then he had five bait hives that were right beside each other that were identical in shape, size, and everything. They were exactly the same and they were right beside each other. And in another test, he had a swarm that was just moving into just one bait hive. And what they found out was, is the swarm moving into the single bait hive moved into that bait hive way faster than the swarm that was trying to determine the best location of the five bait hives. And that was because the scouts at the five bait hives, um, they were spread thin and they just, it took them a lot longer to come to a quorum. Now, how exactly bees reach that quorum when they're at the scout site is still up in the air. Some people believe that it is the sight of the bees, that if they see enough bees, that that tells them that it's the right spot. Some people believe that maybe it's a scent that the bees, that the bees release. And this scent has kind of a lemony smell, which if you know, when we bait our swarm hives, we put lemongrass essential oil in. So maybe that has something to do with it, but it's still kind of in the air. But it was so cool that they were able to determine that, hey, they, they basically figure out that once there's a certain amount of bees at a spot, they return to the swarm and they say, hey, it's time to go. Okay, so everybody's reached a consensus. The bees know where they want to go. And what will happen next is the scouts at the nest site will return to the swarm and start a series of preparatory commands to let the swarm know it's time to get moving. Now, the first thing they will do is they will press their bodies up against the surface of the swarm and they will vibrate their flight muscles and release a frequency. And it'll be like ringing a bell and it's like, wake up, wake up, it's time to get moving. And on top of that, they're gonna run around to different bees, shaking them and jostling them and saying, hey, get up, like we're, we're about to get moving. And the final thing they will do is they will start doing what's called buzz running or what Lindauer called Spielauf, where they will basically plow through other bees, buzzing as hard as they can and saying, hey, we're, we're really about to fly. And the, the final thing what will, will happen is, is the temperature of the swarm will raise to about 97 degrees and the swarm will take off to their home location. Okay, so the bees are moving towards their new home and they're flying and it's really cool. And if you saw the start of the video, that was a swarm that mom caught in 2020 that was on the move. And then at the end of the video, you'll see another swarm that we found this most recent year that was airborne and they were moving towards their new home. And it was really cool, but what is, going on in that cloud of bees that's moving towards their their home location so first and foremost the honeybees have to keep up with the queen because if they don't have a queen they basically are dead in the water um, and they will be unsuccessful at surviving or anything like that so they have to have a queen so the queen will release a pheromone and the honeybees will keep up with that pheromone they will smell it and they will generally stick around her and if they don't smell that pheromone they will backtrack until they do find her so they're always keeping up with the queen to make sure she's good to go because she is absolutely needed in order for the colony to survive. Now, the other thing that's happening is of course their direction and how do they have a sense of direction of where they're going? Well, one of the leading hypotheses is that um, Professor Seeley is really getting behind is that they have certain scout bees that know of the home location. They are basically zipping through the swarm at very high speeds and basically flying in the direction that the colony needs to be moving. And S Professor Seeley did test on Appledore Island for this. I'm not gonna spoil it, but it's really cool. But they were able to figure out, okay, this is, we believe this is how bees are getting in their direction that they're moving. So the bees are going really fast and the, 
the swarm itself is only doing about five miles an hour as it's moving. So the cloud of bees is only going at about five miles an hour. But the, the, they were saying that this, it looked like the scout bees that were showing them the, the direction that the swarm needed to go were flying at about 20 miles an hour through the swarm. So that was really cool. And they basically, they get to their home location and they, 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 try, to, they try to survive. And it's not going to be easy for them. Like I said, only about 25% of colonies survive their first winter. So when they get to that next home, they've got to get building comb. They got to start storing honey. The, the biggest reason why they will fail is a lack of honey going into the winter. So they have to get to work right away. So it's very important for them to get their destination as fast as possible. And yeah, it's just really cool stuff. So that wraps up our video on the honeybee voyagers. And I have to tell you now, guys, you got to go out and get this book, Honeybee Democracy by Professor Thomas Seeley. It is an outstanding book. And even if you don't like reading, this is a book you will not be able to put down. I was totally inspired by this book to make this video. And I just thought it was so cool. And I, I literally read it within a day or two. I mean, I, I really couldn't stop reading it. And I just really enjoyed it. And Professor Seeley has other great books I'm actually reading right now. Check him out as an author. And he has just done some outstanding research. And there's a lot of stuff in this book that I did not cover today that you're not going to find out unless you go out and get it yourself. So go get this book. It's, it's a really good read. And yeah, we just we really hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I, I was really inspired by this information and I really wanted to talk about it. And yeah, it just I, I think it's really cool stuff. And I learned so much about swarms that I did not know before. And now it's just it's like, wow, I really have a decent understanding about how they operate now. So it's just really cool stuff. So we hope you enjoy this video. And until next time, we'll see you soon. And it's a lot, thousands of bees. I mean, they are just, they are incredible. And they're definitely looking for a new home. They're going somewhere and nobody knows where they're going. We got swarm hives around here. But yeah, there's, there's bees everywhere. And mom found them, I gotta give her credit. She definitely found them. Or she heard them and then we came outside and we just looked and here they were swarming. So, pretty cool.